Good morning again. Good morning. We always, uh, our, our hope and our prayers are always that you're, uh, you're doing really good. And if you hit a kind of a rough spot during the week, we'll just always remember to go to the one that yeah. always takes us through it or, or carries us over it. Whatever, that's right. Wh whatever's best for us is what's going to happen. So that's what we're praying for you. And hey, we're celebrating today. We've got a praise. We have two wonderful praises. Last week, if you remember, we were praying for uh, Mr. Sonny Dees, and he was having open heart surgery and did. And mm -hmm. uh, he is now at home recovering Cecil's with his back home. Uh -huh, with his wonderful, wonderful uh, nurse, little nursey wife, Miss Dees. <laughs> and uh, if I ever got sick, I'd certainly want her taking care of me because she's such a wonderful thing. <laughs> and then... Uh, and, and then Mr. Brown, Cecil Brown, got to come home. Uh, he's now, uh, his legs are strengthened, and his lungs are strengthened, and, and he also has a wonderful nurse in Miss Rosie, mm -hmm. and she takes care of him. We're, we just praise God for Amen. these women that are such wonderful helpmates for their, their husbands. We really Amen. are in praise this morning. Uh, we, we, we just praise him for all the answered prayer we've had this week for our protection and, and for our health. And I want you to remember those you're so good about putting uh, names on our prayer list and lifting people up, showing your caring, compassionate ways. And this morning, I want you to remember those that you would be putting on the prayer list. And as we pray, you lift them up, and each day continue that. And we're going to pray right now and, and get started, okay? If you'll bow your head and close your eyes, we'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you, and we are so full of praise. What a... What a wonderful, almighty physician you are. Yes. Just, uh, that's just one. We could, we could sit here the rest of the morning, Lord, and list all the wonderful things you are. And we thank you for that. We thank you and we praise you. And this morning we're lifting up anyone else that's, that has a need this morning. Uh, we're thinking through our prayer list downstairs, Lord. We're, we're also uh, thinking about those at home. Uh, we are always lifting up. Our frontline workers in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, always lifting them up. For the people that are leaders of the different uh, nations, we're lifting them up, Lord, that they'll make listen, listen to their advisors and make godly decisions for the people in each nation, Lord. We pray for those that are so desperately ill. We pray for those that have lost their loved ones through this. And we just uh, we, we know that you are in control, and we are so thankful for that this morning, Lord. Now... We are thankful for your word, just the privilege of being able to worship freely and share it. Lord, we're thankful for the power of prayer that we can come yes. to you 24-7. Yes. We, we just thank and praise you, Jesus, mm -hmm. this morning. We thank and praise you for our salvation and just being, just getting to be your child. What, what a wonderful thing this morning, Lord. We are so, our hearts are thankful and just so full of gratitude that we ask you just be with us now as we... Uh, Come to your word and open it up and study it. There's such a message this morning, Lord, and, and we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Just uh, be with us as we seek you, and we, we let that Holy Spirit guide us so that we can always be uh, ready to help others in your name. And we're going to ask all this in your mighty, powerful name. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to start today with... Uh, our word. I don't know how I got off on this having you a word each time, but I did, and it's just something that I, I'd like to kind of hang on to, have a word to, to build on, and our word today is power, and the dictionary actually Google did this. <laughs> the, <defin> <laughs> the, the, the dictionary I use at home, kids, I think it was printed in about 1900, but uh, I thought, well, maybe I'll have a little more uh, up-to-date, modern uh, definition, so I Google power, and this is the, <laughs> this is the <laughs> definition, the ability to do something, to do something or act in a particular way, and that, we're going to go back to that and go back to that this, today as we study about power, power in our lives. Now, our memory verse today is found in the New Testament, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Paul wrote it, and he wrote to the Ephesians, and this is what he said to them. He said, I, and he's talking about uh, Paul, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he will strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's Ephesians 3.16. And so he was praying that 
that God would strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit. And we do know that. We do know that that, that is where we get our power. And our inner being just means in our, what we call our hearts. We talk about uh, giving our heart over to Jesus in, in our hearts that we'll be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. So last week, if you remember that we studied about the Holy Spirit coming and empowering, uh, and, and our actually our title of our lesson today is when you get your Bible adventures, it will say empowering others. And that's just getting, having power to help others. So uh, after Peter was empowered and given power by the Holy Spirit, Remember, he stood boldly and courageously up, and he talked to, he preached to, I don't know how many thousand people, because 3,000 were saved that day. And it just shows what the power mm -hmm. and letting, letting Jesus take over. That's right. And, and in his name and in his power. It's nothing to us. It's nothing that we do. It's always in his power right. and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now then, <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of things I want us to uh, think about. If, uh, if we have the power, if you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you have the Holy Spirit's power. What do we use it for? What do we take that power and strength and courage and boldness? Do we use it? <clears throat> or what do we use it for if we do use it? We're going to see how Peter used his. And he's such an example and a model. Now, you're going to see how his life was changed from being fearful and, and denying Jesus to being a powerful, bold witness for him. And it's through the power, being plugged in. Can we do the same? I hope you're nodding your head yes, because we surely can. <laughs> and last week, when the Holy Spirit came, it came in the form of, if you remember, it came in something that we could see, something that we could relate to. And it came in the form of the wind, mm -hmm. and it came in the yeah. form of fire. Yes. Now, <clears throat> let's, we're, we're going to just review just this a little bit because I want you to just really, really uh, understand the power that we have as, as followers of Jesus, as his believers. Now, you can't see the wind. You can feel the wind. And that's what they did. They, they felt the wind. They didn't see the wind, but they saw the results of the wind. And if, if you don't believe wind has power, some of these storms we're having, I'm telling you, you just step outside. If you had an umbrella, you little ones could be Mary Poppins in no time at all. <laughs> all the, don't try it. Okay, please. But we, we see on news the, the power of that wind as we see the destruction of, 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 of uh, trees, you know, the, the earth, we see destruction of man-made things, of homes and businesses and uh, every, everything you can imagine uh, the, that wind comes along and, and can destroy it just by its power. But you keep in mind, we have the power. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we also are going to look at fire. And we don't think of fire as having that, that impact that, but it does. It does. In our area, we can talk about brush piles because how many has not been around a brush pile burning? <laughs> and if you get very close, you can see the waves of heat coming off of that brush pile. It's the power. It's the power of that fire within. And we also know if we're wanting to roast weenies, we've got to wait till it burns down because <laughs> it's just going to be that the power of that heat is just too much. So both of these things represent the power of the Holy Spirit. But what you have to keep in mind is you have that power. Think of the strength that, and the power that we have that gives us courage and boldness to just go out and tell others about Jesus, help others. There's always a way, kids, and we're going to look at, at some of the ways Peter worked today, but there's all kinds of things, and I want you to start thinking uh, about ways that you can help others. I know we're not in school. We're not out and about like we normally are, but there are. That never stops God. God is always, and he's everywhere. So he's always at work. He's just waiting for us to join him. And through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we can do that, and we can help others. Now, we, we think about, um, 
we always think about our physical. Of course we do. In our physical life, we think about what gives us power. And I don't know, I would assume, and I'm going to think probably, that your moms will say, uh, now you're going to have to eat some breakfast. You, <laughs> you've got to have strength. And uh, it'll give you power for later on in the day. And we see uh, the results of you kids when we give you lots of sugar, because that gives you lots of power and energy. Uh, but the things that we take into our body and that we eat gives us power to live and uh, carry on throughout the day. Another thing that we do is uh, the, the United States of America is physical crazy, I think. Uh, there's gyms all over the place that people go and work out. And you see machines um, advertised all the time on TV that's going to build your body into a stronger, more powerful person. So physical exercise is another thing. But something you might not think about is your positive thinking. If you think negatively, if you think negative thoughts, then it, it you're going to be going around like a negative Nelly, just not mm -hmm. even uh, wanting to hold your head up even, not possessing the power that you have if you'll just think positively and think positive thoughts. That gives us power. That also gives us power. And it's, it's the same way uh, in our spiritual life. We're just talking about physical. Now we're going to talk about spiritual, and our spiritual life is our life we, that we live with Jesus Christ. Amen. So yeah. there's things that uh, Jesus wants us to do to get our power. And first thing in the morning also, and that is come to him in prayer and start our day. If we don't start our day in prayer, we have 24-7 that we can always, always go to him. Yeah. And that's where we get our, our power. Uh, uh, Mr. Mike was showing me this morning on the back, he was reading to me on the back of your Bible adventure about the power of prayer and what it was saying about the power of prayer. So be sure and uh, use your Bible adventure and read that. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. our word, the word of God right here that we have, that we can always go to for our power. It, it strengthens us, it feeds us, Amen. it gives us our nourishment to live a life for Jesus. Amen. And then we can't, we can't leave out obeying that Holy Spirit. We have the power, but if we don't use the power, then it's not any good. Mm -hmm. And obeying the Holy Spirit gives us the power to continue to do what Jesus has for us to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, in help, that's helping others. Uh, I, I brought something today. I, I brought a lamp. And look at this little jigger. It's a, new, huh? it, it's a, I'm, I got it on clearance at Walmart. That even makes it better. So anyway, and it is brand new. It is brand new. And so I'm going to use it because if we don't, if we don't let Jesus' light shine, through, what good does it do? Shine through us. If it does not shine through us, we miss so many opportunities mm -hmm. to share him, to share him with others by helping them, by helping others. So I'm going to turn the light on. It, it, it's no light, no Jesus. Okay, we're going we're to accept Jesus as our Savior and watch how he lights our light up, our life up. Oh, it's new. My goodness. Well, Mr. Mike. Well, well, let me check it. Let me check the. Well, let me check something. My check goodness. The cord. See, let me follow it back here. Some, something's wrong. Well, uh, uh, plug it in. As we get plugged into Jesus, it Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, look at there. Look at there. It does work. It does yeah. work. It wasn't plugged in, and Mr. Mike fixed it, didn't he? And that's a. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mike. You're welcome. Uh, see, he Thank you, Lord. He, he, yeah, he just handed his shirt pocket, isn't he? I, I'm a, I am really, really thankful that he's with us each week. Praise God. I enjoy that. But anyway, this lamp was absolutely unplugged, totally and completely useless unplugged. When it was plugged in, when Mr. Mike plugged it in, it worked and it did exactly what it's supposed to do. It yeah. gives off light. Same way with us kids. If we don't plug in mm -hmm. to Jesus and, and have that power... Right. then our life is, is dull, it's useless in, in the Amen. work of Jesus. That's right. That we Amen. just have to stay plugged into our, and that he's our power source. He is our power source. The Holy Spirit comes mm -hmm. in and gives us that power, and it's through Jesus Christ and our belief in him. So today, 
we're going to go to, and I'm really glad my lamp works. Uh, I, I, love, I love to get clearance specials, but I like for them to work. So that was good. But today we're going to uh, go to Acts in our Bible, and it's going to be the third chapter. And remember, we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then we're going to, uh, after John comes Acts. So we're going to stop right now. And we're going to go to our New Testament song because we want to keep our minds fresh and, and where things are located. And we don't want to forget about this. So we're going to do our song right quick. And then we'll go to our scripture. Here we go. Are we ready? Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts in a letter to the Romans. First and second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first and second third John. June and Revelation. Woo, way to yes. go. Yeah, that was a Ooh, good job, wasn't like it? Uh, good job, kids. I'll learn I it eventually. Mm, the, <laughs> it, hey, we may have to step up and help Mr. Mike learn that. But <laughs> I need all the help. It, it, does, it does. Even as I was uh, I, I'm going through this, I'm thinking, now, where was that? And I put that little <laughs> song in my mind. Now, in, in Acts, it's... Yes, uh, last week we saw where the very beginning of the church started. And now we're going to see these men as filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with boldness and courage, start stepping out and witnessing for Jesus. And Mr. Mike was, and I were talking last week, and we were talking about the 3,000. He said, I thought there was somewhere, uh, it talked about 5,000, and he was exactly right. It talks about in the, the third book, of Acts about, and there were uh, there were five thousand added to the people. Uh, uh, just amazing mm, what the right. power what the power can do, guys. Amen. So Amen. let's let's look and see what happened to Peter. And we're going to read we're going to read the uh, first twelve verses, and then we're going to talk about them in just a minute. Okay. Let me let me put my specs on so I can see. Now Peter <laughs> and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Now, let's stay there just a second. The ninth hour was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. People, uh, the, the devout, it said the devout Jews and the Gentiles that had begun to believe in uh, Jesus, they went to the temple, which was like their church. They went to the temple three times a day. They went at 9 o'clock in the morning, and they went at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is the ninth hour, and then they went at sunset. So Peter and John went at it would be 3 o'clock in our time in the ninth hour. That's what that's talking about. Okay, now we're ready for the second verse. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried. Now, when it said a certain lame man, lame, of course, you know, lame means that they could not, he could not walk. Mm -hmm. That's what lame means. And from his mother's womb what means that that's the way he was born. He was mm -hmm. born not able to walk. And he was carried. Now, during this time, uh, there were no health nurses coming to your home, and there were no wheelchairs. There, there was. They had to depend on someone to always care for their needs. So someone carried him each day, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. There was a gate that you went through to go into the temple, and it was the main main entrance into going into the temple. So they would take him each day and they would lay him there because two things. It was the most people that came through there. And also, uh, if, you're, if you're going to go in to prayer, then he was counting on your heart being a more giving heart. Mm -hmm. So he was laid there to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. And alms just means an offering. So what he was doing... He was, he was laying there each day begging, and that, that was acceptable in their day. That was the only way that uh, people that couldn't work, he wasn't able to work, uh, had of living. And then who's seeing Peter and John? 
they were coming, Peter and John were walking along, about to go into the temple, asking alms. So as they went by, he begged. He was begging for them to give him an offering. <coughs> Excuse me. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Beggars, of course. <coughs> I don't, and I didn't cough into my elbow either. <laughs> I, I was supposed to. But, <coughs> guys, let me, let me get my cough drop. No, let me get some water. <coughs> my, I, I was telling Mr. Richard and Mr. Mike both this morning, <coughs> my allergies ha are having a fit. <coughs> so they told him they told him look up and, and a beggar of course they, they kept their eyes downcast all the time because they felt like worthless they felt worthless mm -hmm. and they didn't look up mm -hmm. and so Peter and John said look up at me and he gave heed unto them it means he did he looked up expecting to receive something of them is he ever in for a surprise now this has got this has got something very, very important that we go, we're going to have to look at. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Peter and John, they weren't, they weren't wealthy people. They were from uh, Galilee, and they were fishers of men. Uh, now, they had been fishers. Me, fisher, <laughs> fishermen. <laughs> fishers, that's a good term. And, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. They had the power, did they not? They had Jesus Christ. You cannot have anything in your life better than Jesus Christ, no matter how rich you are mm -hmm. or how uh, in poverty you are. Nothing matters more than that. Amen. And look what he did. He didn't say, okay, get up. Look what how he put it. In the name of Jesus right. of Nazareth, Amen. rise up and walk. He didn't say, uh, it's in my power. He was making it very plain that he was using the power right. of Amen. Jesus Christ. And the right. only way that he could do that was because he was plugged in, kids. Right. He was plugged into Jesus. He had that power. And he took him by the hand, by the right hand, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Amen. It does that just make you want to jump. Uh, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now let, let's look how the, the man reacted. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walk, walking and leaping and praising God. Is that not, does that make you just want to jump around? And if you're at home and you can jump around, well, just jump around. Yeah. Uh, and if we, Mr. Richard is our actor, and if he wasn't running the sound room, we'd get him to come up here and demonstrate for us. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. But anyway, for another time. Maybe we can get him to do it after you get back in church. <laughs> and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, the people that went daily to the temple saw him every single day. And they mm -hmm. knew he was lame. They right. knew he couldn't walk. And now they're seeing him. They're seeing him in the temple walking, leaping, praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat by for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Mm -hmm. right. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. They, 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 they couldn't believe. They honestly couldn't believe what had happened to him. They just didn't know about the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. did they? Right. And, and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, he was, he was right there with them. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. They're still wondering. <clears throat> and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? He said, You ought to know where this power came from. Mm -hmm. why, why are you so surprised? Right. Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Why are you looking at us? Because look what he says, as though by our own power? Uh-uh. Our holiness, we've made this man to walk. He said, why are you looking at us? We had nothing to do with this other being used by the power of Jesus Christ. So at, as we go on down into the scripture in the third chapter, the, the priest and the teachers of the law in the temple, they just couldn't let this alone. 
And so they, they brought Peter and John because they, they knew it. They saw, they saw what had happened. They brought them and said, what do you think you're doing? And on down through the chapter, uh, Peter gets another opportunity to preach about Jesus in front to them, to these people. And they took Peter and John, not knowing what to do with them, and they, they put them in jail. And they spent the night in jail, and the next morning they were released. And he, they told them before they were released to quit preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. So Peter and John went back to the group of believers. And in the Acts, the, the fourth chapter, we're over into the fourth chapter now, um, after they had been let go, they went to their own company, which were the, the body of believers, and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, he lifted up their voice, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. Now look at this. And said, Lord, thou art God. They know where that power that they have is coming from, which has made heaven and earth, how much powerful can you get, kids, and the sea and all that is in, in them is. And when they had prayed, <clears throat> and when they had prayed, listen to your power of prayer that I've been talking to you about, mm -hmm. the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. The power of prayer, <clears throat> that's where we, we get our prayer. That's where we get our power. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, follow Peter as he goes on. And we're going to go from the fourth chapter, and we're going to skip. We're going to take a little trip. Here we go. And we're going to skip over to the ninth chapter of, of Acts. We're going to stay in Acts in the ninth chapter. And when we get, when we get to the ninth chapter, we're going to find, let, let me turn in my Bible so I'll have our scripture right in front of us, kids. We find that Peter had left, he had left Jerusalem at this time. The time period had passed, and he had left Jerusalem and was out traveling around. And he was in the city of Lydia, which was about 38 miles from Jerusalem. So he had gone out. Uh, if we traveled all the way down to the Queen, we would be, that's 32 miles. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea of the distance that he was. And he was in the, the city of Lydia. And while he was there, there was another man. And his name was Aeneas. And when he saw Aeneas, Aeneas was another man that, has, that was lame and had been lame for eight years. And he saw him. He told him to stand and walk. And he did. The strength just came into his. And again, in the name of Jesus, he told him to stand and walk. Let me, let me read that exactly to you. Hang on just a second. Let me find it. And Peter said <clears throat> to him, to Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Listen to that. Isn't that wonderful? Get up and take care of your, of your mat. And immediately he got up, and all those that lived in Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, if we, if we will use our power, kids, we can lead others to know Jesus right. as their Savior. Amen. Uh, through just by helping helping others, imp being empowered to do that. Now, in in the thirty sixth verse, we're going we're going to start with the thirty sixth verse. This was happening in Lydia. Now, this is what was happening in Joppa. And Joppa was a, a city. You may, if you think back to Jonah, you know that's where mm -hmm. he was, and trying to escape. Uh, from following the Holy Spirit's leading. And we ended up in the belly of a big fish. So uh, <clears throat> we need to be careful of, of not following that, don't we? So the, the, in, in Joppa, this is what was going on. Oop, i got to put my glasses on because I'm reading it off the screen, y'all. Now, there was a, at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. Now, it, when we say disciple, it did not mean... That means a follower of Jesus Christ. It did not mean it was men only. It was anyone. 
boy, yeah. girl, right. same as today, boy, girl, man, or woman, anyone that accepts Jesus as their Savior, and which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Now, she had a, um, a name, a Aramaic name. She had a Greek name. So she was called one or the other. And this woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And alms deeds just meant giving. Mm -hmm. She did all kinds of things. And it was all in the name of Jesus. It was all because she had Jesus as her Savior and had that Holy Spirit to empower her to do things for others, to help others, just like it does now. Okay, let's travel on here. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber, and they were allowed, <clears throat> when, when someone died during this time, they washed the body. And if you lived in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem, the body had to be buried that day. But outside of Jerusalem, they could wait up to three days. So they washed her body, and they laid it up, we'd call it upstairs, in an upper chamber. For as much as Lydia was not a job of 12 miles, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men. Now, they knew where Peter was, so they took two of the people that believed in Jesus that was there, and they sent them to get Peter. So we've got to have some help here. So Peter had already, had people were already believing and understanding that his boldness came from Jesus. Yeah. And don't, if we want help, don't we want to turn to someone that's being led by Jesus? Amen. Oh, I say. Amen. And so they sent for Peter. And they sent these two men desiring him that he would not delay to come with them. They said, hurry, please come with us. And so mm -hmm. Peter arose and went with them. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't, oh, I've got other things to do. He went. He was led by the Holy Spirit. And when he come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows <clears throat> stood by him weeping. Now, let me show you, tell you something about widows in those days. Widows, you, you know, we've talked about it. They are women that do not have their husbands. They've lost their husbands through uh, death, and they didn't have any income. They, they had no way of making a living then. They didn't work like we do today. And so they were without. Dorcas took it upon herself, or Tabitha, whichever name you'd rather call her, she took it upon herself to help them. So when she died, they lost a great, great person out of their life. And they were so sad, and they were standing there by her bed, and they were weeping. And they were showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas had made mm -hmm. while she was with them. So she was, she was helping others by sewing for them and providing clothing that they wouldn't have had otherwise. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. Now, when Jesus, Peter was with Jesus when he healed Jairus' daughter. He's following the same pattern. He he's, was modeled. He followed his model, Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus did with the exception of praying. Of course, Jesus is God. And Peter kneeled down and got the power. Look where he got his power. Do you see that word? He prayed. Out of prayer comes power. And he prayed and turning him to the body said, and turning to the body said, Tabitha, that's the name he called her, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Mm -hmm. And when he called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you see when we help in the yeah. name of Jesus what the witness is? Yeah. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner. That's also a testimony to uh, Peter and in his love for others through Jesus Christ because Simon was he a tanner is someone that takes hides it, we, we know that takes mm -hmm. hides and tans them and makes them usable but Simon was also an outcast because the Jews did not believe you were supposed to touch anything anything dead so Simon was an outcast in that manner Peter went right on he followed the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit 
and we're going to see how he was used while he was there at Tanner's house in our lessons that are coming up. But from today, are you beginning to understand a little bit more, I hope a whole lot more, about the power uh, that we possess with the Holy Spirit? Uh, I pray that if this morning, if, if, um, if we have our lesson and there's not, in, there's not someone that believes in Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they don't have access to this power. You don't have access to it if you don't believe in Jesus Amen. Christ as your Savior. Amen. I pray that you will trust him. Also, you kids that have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you live with that power. Amen. You get that power and you grasp it and you use it each day to help others. As, yes. uh, and we never know, look at how many people come to the saving right. knowledge of Jesus just by They're Peter using you. the power. They are what, and Mr. Mike is exactly right. They watch how we live our life, and we live our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit helping others. Amen. So this, this coming week, be sure that you get your power. You power up in the morning to pray. You uh, get your Bible study. Get your power from the Word of God, and then listen to the leadership of the Holy Spirit and obey it. And, oh, what a week we're going to have, right? Amen. Now, Mr. Mike has come this morning, and he is going to uh, do a song with us. And you're, you're really going to like it. So okay. join in with us. One thing I want to say, I always like it, and I think I do too. God is good. All the time. All the time. God All is the good. time. God <laughs> is good. God is good. Yes. Uh, the title is God's Amazing Power. And uh, it is by God's amazing power. What she was talking about, uh, people were healed, and uh, the lame stood up and walked. And this, the song is about God's amazing power and everything, but it also talks about one lame man that was healed, like the one that was healed by the Holy Spirit when Peter told him to get up, get up and walk. So, Richard, amen. Would you play that God's amazing power? Y'all have heard this. This is one of the many songs that we played here in Children's Church. I, th I think you'll like it. Uh, the, the color is beautiful. The color is beautiful. Well, it was their creation and still going strong. Amen. God's amazing power. You can call on Him when it is going wrong. Saw with a blinding light, God's great power gave Saul new sight. His power is real, he's always the same, and that is why we praise his name. God's amazing power, God's amazing power. God sent Paul to tell about Jesus, about God's love and his life that frees us. God's power is real. He healed the lame, and that is why we praise his name. God's amazing power. God's amazing power. Father in heaven, it's always a pleasure to come together with uh, Christian brothers. We thank you for Richard in the sound booth and Gail in the office and, 
and uh, Miss Arlene that done the, the lesson, and, and uh, she has a gift of teaching, and I always learn something from her. And it co- it's because of the Holy Spirit speaking through her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and the lesson of the lame man that was healed. And, Father, may we all be a witness to someone. May we look to speak to someone. They're watching our lives, kids. They're watching us. So your your life is a testimony. It's the, maybe the only Bible that some folks read. May we be the best that we can through Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit speak to us. Uh, let us remember everyone in, in prayer, uh, ones that have been in the hospital. And uh, I miss you kids. Look forward to seeing y'all at Children's Church. And forgive me where I fail, Lord, and bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen.